Good afternoon and welcome to today's free CEU webinar series from TCIA. My name is Bob Rouse with TCIA. And uh, today we have Bob Mead as an instructor and the free webinar is improving your crew performance. Crew leaders who know how to give praise and feedback will have higher performing crews. Keeping your crews performing at a high level is dependent on dealing with bad behavior quickly and effectively. And that those two topics are the main features, uh, uh, the main items we will be addressing during today's webinar. As I said, it's a free CEU webinar. So at the end, we will give out an ISA uh, CEU and uh, number. And we will also give uh, anyone who is a CTSP will also receive uh, uh, one CEU for being on this webinar. Uh, your audio is muted for today's webinar uh, to avoid feedback and other issues that may be going on. Um, I do want to go over a little bit of housekeeping and guidelines. I mentioned the free CEUs. I mentioned um, a, a little bit about why your audio is muted. We will, however, uh, be uh, trying to make this as interactive as we can. And to do that, we will be using the chat feature. Uh, depending on how it should be in the uh, to the right of the main bar that uh, that pull either pulls down or pulls up depending on how your your mobile device or desktop device is set up. Um, it may be in the more tab, so you have to go into the more tab and click on chat. Uh, but uh, I'd encourage you to open that chat feature, and there'll be a couple uh, slides where. Uh, we really intend to have an interactive session. There's some questions and prompts for you to answer. Today's instructor, Bob Mead. Bob is the co-owner of Mead Tree and Turf Care. Uh, 40 years in business, a former career firefighter, paramedic. Uh, Bob has 22 employees. They're a TCI accredited company. Bob is a CTSP, a QCL, that's our qualified crew leader. Uh, he's a approved qualified crew leader trainer, instructor and also uh, has done aerial lift specialist, chipper operator specialist, ground operations specialist, aerial rescue trainer, CPR first aid, and AED trainer. So uh, at this time, I am going to uh, stop sharing my screen and turn it over to Bob and he's gonna bring up his slides. Good afternoon, everyone. Can uh, we see the... Uh slides on the uh, main screen. Okay, is it coming up? Are we still there? Hello. Hey, Bob, uh, uh, did you uh, click uh, share screen? Yeah, I did. I, we had a, um, a generator flip on here. Right in the middle of this. Uh, I've seen I've lost that. Okay. Um... There we go. Let me try this again. There you go. Yep, we can we can see it, and all you have to do is start the slideshow now. All right. There we go. Okay. Good afternoon, sorry about that. Unfortunately, the poor timing for the generator to flip on. Um, all right, so what we need to talk a little about today is performance management. Uh, it, it's key to every company's operations. Uh, as we've gone through the, the years, we've learned that we've progressed with this and we find that going through the performance management has helped us develop better crew leaders and deliver a better um, service to our clients. A little bit about our learning objectives today. We're gonna to explain the importance of evaluating crew leader performance, 
uh, crew member performance, discuss methods to effectively give praise and positive behavior, methods to correct poor performance, and explain why it's important to address inappropriate behavior on time. Okay. Why is it important to evaluate performance? Uh, if you guys will use your chat feature, can we get a little bit of interaction from you there? All right, no interaction on that one? Okay. Well, we evaluate performance to ensure safety All right, there we go with chat. We want feedback, okay? We want to determine the latest latent conditions and organizational weaknesses, uh, receive repeat clients, that's key, and better crew performance. All those are very good notes. Ensuring safety of our crew members is paramount. Um, a lot of times it seems to be that the crew, crew leaders focused on other things and not watching over the crew. That doesn't mean he has to micromanage, but he has to basically make sure that the crew is doing what we're supposed to be doing in a safe and productive manner. Um, and there's occasionally problems will arise and we need to correct those in a timely fashion, whether it be right away, whether it's a serious issue. Okay, and we also need to develop this employee's skills, maybe by what they're doing is not building good skills. Your employees, they want feedback. They want feedback in a timely fashion. Okay, and by giving that to them in a timely fashion, it allows the employee to develop their skills better with what they know they're doing well, what they're not doing well, and what they need to work on. Employees need this as frequently as practical. Why do we say that as frequently as practical? Okay, because if we don't give them to it, give it to them regularly, they have no baseline to judge as to how they're doing. And it always needs to be constructive. One thing I've learned throughout the years is the way that you talk to an employee in guiding them through their skill level is it needs to be a constructive criticism or a positive attitude, not yelling at somebody for doing something wrong, but allowing that person to hear what you've done. And one of the things that I learned years ago is a method called warm, fuzzy, cold, prickly, warm, fuzzy. And that's basically the warm and fuzzy is you tell them what they're doing very well. Then you give them the, the cold and prickly of what they need to work on. And then you reinforce that again with a warm and fuzzy of what they're doing well and how they can have worked on things to get to where they are. An objective is to measure it against a the criteria. There has to be a measurable criteria. Um, as an accredited company, we have um, checklists for all of our employees and we use those checklists to measure the criteria. This is a good way to allow an employee to learn where they are in their skill set, no matter how long they've been doing the job and what they're doing, and to give them something that they can see in writing as to where they are and what they need to do to move forward. Now, this is great for promotional things. Why would you praise positive performance? Well, first is maintenance of high morale. High morale is great for a crew. There's nothing like seeing that crew that's laughing, getting along well together, talking to each other, praising each other for things that they do, and it helps motivate your employees. And if you can motivate your employees, you get more of what you reward, okay? And by doing that, it, the employees seem to buy into what you have. That buy-in is, is key. 
a lack of guidance in training and performance management. That's a tough one because a lot of us have learned that by the seat of our pants, a lack of guidance in suffering and performance management. Okay, so we've kind of seen some good people come and go, and we've seen, you know, some bad people stick around because we didn't give them the guidance and they just didn't know. Um, so this is a problem for crew leaders. We've empowered our crew leaders to work with new people as well as any, any skill level that they have on their job site to get them to move along, okay? and develop their skills, whether it be something as simple as raking a yard or you know, feeding a brush chipper or climbing, okay? Any questions so far? There's a good comment there. We need each other to do our jobs, absolutely. How to give praise. Praise has to be genuine. It has to fit the need. You can't overly boast about something that's so meaningless just to make that person feel good because that removes what that praise was for. Again, it becomes something that's just, the crew leader's just talking. Okay, it needs to be consistent. You need to consistently do it which doesn't mean that you have to do it for each and every movement that a crew member makes, but you need to be consistent with how you give praise, how you, who you give praise to, and you know, the way you talk to them. Be specific. As you can see in this slide here, this guy is very specific. He's pointing out something that this crew member did that he thought was great, okay? So that praise was good. And he, he let him know it may have been, it looks like he's roping something down and maybe he's doing a great job in roping, okay? And he's appreciated that. Make sure it's timely, good feedback. Everybody likes feedback and it needs to be timely. Don't wait till next week to teach some, tell somebody that, oh, you did a good job last week raking that yard or roping that limb down over that white in Mrs. Smith's yard. They've forgotten about that all. And it needs to be proportionate with the, what they're doing. Again, don't over-exaggerate. Make it proportionate. Make it on a level that they can understand and appreciate. And keep it timely and specific and consistent. One of the chat features, uh, questions that I saw was praise in public. Can be a good idea. It also could backfire. Some people don't like to be singled out because it makes them look good or bad in front of the other people. Um, like maybe he's always given one person praise and not me. It can create resentment amongst other employees. You need to exercise your judgment based on the circumstances that you're giving praise and the crew that you're working with. Part of the chat discussion, does someone have an example of an employee praise reward that went well? There's a good one. What gets noticed gets repeated. Give the praise to an employee, then share the success with others. Absolutely, that's a great top uh, point there. Yeah, that employee feels good with, it, with what they have done, and you've now shared his success with the rest of the crew members. They may all pick up on that. They might not have even known about it. All right, it may be something that they're not doing. Any other feedback? Do you have an example of an employee praise reward that back, backfired on you? Nobody's had any backfires? Okay. Move on there.
There you go, there's some good ones. Making them think they're more skilled than they really are. Absolutely. We just had a situation with that, with cabling with a young person that thought they were really good at it, but when it really got down to it, they didn't understand what they were doing, what was wrong. So we brought them to the side and we discussed it with them. And then we ended up having a training about cabling and it helped everybody, okay? Without anybody even knowing if this person had a problem with cabling. Creates resentment from other employees. Could create a false sense of an experience. Yeah. Anybody else? Poor performance can result in safety risk. That's the number one thing that we're worried about, safety risk. We don't want to put our employees or our coworkers at a unsafe situation due to someone doing something repeatedly and it not being corrected. It also reduces the productivity and results in negative morale and the dreaded crew conflict and the poor quality work as a result of that. I've seen guys before where the crew is in conflict and some guys will do things not to help each other or make a good turnout. And what ends up happening is, is the crew and the company suffers as a whole and Mrs. Smith's yard doesn't get done or attention given to her plant material that we're there to work on professionally. When there's a problem, understand that the problems rarely resolve themselves. Um, Way back when we, we did an exercise and that seemed to be um, one of everybody's weaknesses. They don't like to get involved with other people's problems, okay? If you don't get involved with the problems that you're noting, you need to do that because the problem will escalate, okay? And consider whether there's an underlying issue and confront it with an open mind. Never confront something with, an open, with a closed mind. Use an open mind, listen. Observe, observe what that employee is saying and, and doing, okay? Okay, you need to address these behavior problems in a timely, not but in an angry fashion. By letting them go, goes back to safety risk, reduced productivity, negative morale, crew conflict, and poor quality work, which ultimately ends up in major issues for all involved. If you have a behavior problem, do it in private, as a crew leader, or if it escalates up to a supervisor, it needs to be done in private, not out in front of everybody. Take the person off to the side, ask them what's wrong. You never know, they may be having another issue, okay, that's creating that. State the specific problem and don't bring attitudes into it. As a member, as the crew leader, you need to be a neutral. You need to be able to resolve issues and problems with the crew without taking sides. Listen to what they have to say. One of the exercises we did in class with this was two crew members were having a difficulty getting along and it basically got down to one crew member didn't listen to what the other one had, which created a problem and the two crew members ended up escalating it to the point where they were coming to yelling and screaming in public. Uh, it didn't turn out well for everybody. You need to agree with these people on their performance goals, what they need to do to get where you want them to be, okay? It, it, it's just gen, general, like the two gentlemen here, rake in the yard. Nobody likes riding the rake, but you need to do a good job. You can do the best job removing that tree, trimming that tree, and if you do a crappy cleanup job, what's the first thing the client sees? What's the first thing the public sees is a poor cleanup job. You can sit there and say company B is the best in the world and you do a poor cleanup job and you just prove that company B was the worst, okay? They could have hired somebody else to do this better. You need to follow up with that employee. Follow up with that employee in a, in a preset time. Say, hey, next week we'll get together on Friday afternoon. We'll see how things are going. We'll talk about this a little more. 
Do we think we can get to that? And, and it'll, it'll definitely make that employee listen. Unsafe behaviors must be addressed immediately. Stop the behavior on the spot if it's practical, okay? And in this slide here, the gentleman's hard hat's off while he's using the throw ball. What's wrong with that? Well, why is his hard hat not on his head? It's supposed to be. It could be as simple as he didn't buckle his chin strap. It falls off. It could be the hard hat's the wrong size for him. He has an issue with it, okay? There's some underlying reason that's causing that. So um, you need to stop the behavior on the spot, ask the employee to put the hard hat back on, explain to them why it needs to be on if they can't understand that, okay? And be clear about your expectations. I expect you to wear that hard hat Buckle the chin strap each and every time you get out of the truck. That's the first thing you do when you get out of the truck. And if you have a problem with that employee, then escalate that up to the supervisor. Maybe he needs to be dealt with in a disciplinary fashion that follows your company protocol. When do you take your problems to your supervisor? You need to first, <clears throat> excuse me, follow your company protocol or policies. Recurring and ongoing problems definitely need to be brought to management's attention. Significant safety issues. You have an employee who's been in a bucket truck all their life and they've one-handed a chainsaw. All of a sudden, they're one-handing a chainsaw while they're climbing or in a bucket. It doesn't make it right whether you're climbing or in a bucket, but they're still using the chainsaw with one hand, okay? That needs to be addressed instantly. Legal issues, legal issues definitely need to be run up the chain. You don't know what's gonna go on with that. Uh, if you have two employees harassing each other, um, using poor language or other types of derogatory statements, that definitely needs to be settled on the management level, okay? And problems that are basically just about beyond your skill level, maybe you haven't been trained in all of them. So that's something else that needs to be brought up the line. That's how you can learn from it. Does anybody have an example of dressing an incorrect employee behavior that went well? Take a few minutes and let's go to the chat feature. Anybody have any examples you want to talk about? There you go, there's a good one. We had an employee show up late consistently. Okay. We went about it in another manner. Did, did you look into seeing if that employee had a reason for being late consistently? Maybe a problem at home with child behavior or they had a problem with a medical issue, something like that? Catching a driver using a cell phone. Boy, that's a big one now. There's a good one. Bucket operator, one hand and chainsaw after discussion and offer of a safer alternative. The problem was resolved when the employer realized poor positioning of equipment was contributing to one handed saw use. Yes. I've actually heard of some companies taking away the top hand, the uh, top handle chainsaws from their employees so they couldn't one hand it. They had to have two hands on it all the time. No hard hat. An employee was addressed and became one of our best safety oriented employees. That's a great example there. That person may not have understood that they needed to have their hard hat on. 
Okay. Poor driving called in by a motorist. The employee agreed the event and the vehicle safety, and it was discussed. Very good. Okay. Some good issues here. Do you have any examples of addressing an incorrect employee behavior that did not go well? Let's go ahead and take a few moments to chat about that. That ought to be a good one. <laughs> had an employee would not wear his hard hat correctly. He wore it backwards. Two days in a row after changing the ratchet around, he left work and did not return. I guess that fixed the problem, but um, maybe the underlying cause was is he just didn't know how to wear it or didn't want to wear it that way. Alcohol abuse issues is a huge issue. The employee was submitting poor quality field data. When confronted, they blamed it on training procedures and the instructors. Well, you know, there's always somebody to blame something on. Now, that wow. The employee wouldn't wear his safety harness when he's up in the air 83 feet. One second time had to let him go when we spent months fighting him on unemployment. We finally won. Congratulations for you. Hopefully you, you guys document a lot of this stuff. Motor vehicle conduct, that's bad attitude, yeah. All documents and you are credit, congratulations. Frequent tardius when addressed, left he left employment. Now, tardiness is a problem, but sometimes there's an underlying issue um, with it, and hopefully you can get to that without losing the uh, employee. There's nothing worse than having a crew sitting around waiting for somebody to show up. All counseling events are documented. Very good. Everything we do, unfortunately, today, or fortunately, needs to be documented. Uh, very good shares. Thank you. All right. Remember, in performance management, give honest and timely feedback and be specific with praise about what you're giving them praise for. Don't do it in general. And counsel for behavior problems in private. Address your safety issues immediately. Okay, that's key. Don't overlook opportunities for praise. Don't just say, I gave him that last week. Yeah, I know we talked about it. Maybe you need to tell that person again they did a good job. Never tolerate unacceptable performance and av always avoid addressing behavior problems. Okay, don't avoid it. It needs to be addressed right away, okay? Or they escalate. Okay. Does anybody else got anything they'd like to share? There's some pretty good uh, chats on here with uh, the seatbelt, you know, resulted in failure to use a seatbelt. That's a huge one. We've, we've all seen that one, uh, unfortunately, and, you know, we can't tolerate that. Uh, commercial motor vehicles, I, I don't know in the states you're from, but I know here in Maryland, that's, that's a huge one that they, they target, that and cell phone use. Anybody else want to share anything? Okay. Bob Rouse, you still there? Hey, yeah, Bob, thanks. I'm still here. 
and uh, what I'm going to do now, it sounds like we have uh, uh, all the questions we, we can answered and there was some good chat discussion. So what I'm going to do now is just go through the closing and I'm going to uh, share my screen and just uh, go over a couple of closing slides here. Okay, uh, so uh, thank you, Bob. And uh, uh, what today's uh, webinar gave you was a, uh, a bit of a flavor of our Qualified Crew Leader Workshop. It's a one-day workshop where we have a lot of interactive sessions. Uh, in today's uh, webinar, uh, those points where we stopped and Bob had some question and answers uh, under that chat discussion heading. Uh, in the workshop, those are activities we do with folks. We get them up, we get them active, we get them practicing um, in these examples, how to give praise, just doing some role play and uh, going into it sounds like, oh, my guys aren't going to go and, or my, my employees, my guys, and my, my, my women aren't going to go and uh, sit in a chair and then get up and interact and do role playing. But trust me, they love it. They do it. It's something different and they get to work on those uh, uh, challenges they have every day with uh, their peers at their level who understand what they're going through. So uh, great workshops. We hope uh, to see some of you at them once those are up and running again. Um, our next uh, free webinar series is May 13th, 3 to 4 p.m. Uh, so next Wednesday, same time, same place. Uh, we're going to go over um, effective communication with crews and clients with Chris Rasmussen. And this is really where we talk about learning how to listen to your crews and clients and how that's the first step in communicating with them effectively. You can register uh, at tca.org uh, slash TCI education events. Um, there's a tab at the top uh, under events and you can uh, get to this web page through that and all of our webinars are listed on that page. We also have a business series of webinars we've been putting on to help businesses through this uh, COVID-19 period as best we can. And um, we also started uh, working with uh, Nats and uh, offering some uh, um, related types of webinars, um, soft skill webinars with Nats on Fridays. So you can take a look for that. Uh, we did uh, building crew resiliency last uh, Friday, and that was pretty interesting, kind of a different topic, but it's really talking about how to keep crews healthy and really build up that, that health in, in your crews and your employees. Um, so it was also timely. Um, okay, uh, with that, thank you very much. I am going to mute and leave this slide up just a little bit longer, and then we will shut down the webinar. Thank you very much, and have a great afternoon.